If you collect wooden trains, chances are you've come across one of these Sodor line cabooses. It's arguably one of the most common pieces of rolling stock as it was everywhere. But as much as I love Americana rolling stock, my heart is in European steam. I'm Gio and today we're going to turn this American caboose into a classic British brake van. Now my plan is pretty simple. Cut off the top raised section of the caboose, fill in any gaps in the roof, and raise the height of the base around a centimeter. Slap some decals on and we're golden. The style would be similar to the NW brake van but would be slightly more realistic as the roof wouldn't be one single blocky part. Seems basic enough, right? Well, no. It was a lot more painful than one would expect. In fact, compared to all my previous and current customs, this has to be one of the most frustrating experiences I've ever had attempting to take an item apart. Well, getting it off the chassis was simple as you'd expect. But the issue was removing the raised bit which just became trying to saw and slice it off with what seemed like an unbearably long time. I felt like Phil Swift cutting into a plastic barrel. Eventually I got it off, but then that led to another problem. The nail, which turned out was only there for aesthetic purposes only. It did not want to come out though. After attempting to remove it with multiple different types of pliers and a hammer, I ended up breaking the top off, which at that point I was so sick of trying to remove, I ended up just cutting down as much as I could and just hammering the excess back into the body simple yet effective. And speaking of hammering, you should hammer that subscribe button. I'm sorry. Now that the most difficult part was done, and trust me, you only saw the highlights of 20 minutes of video pain, I moved to the chassis and removed the wheel slightly off camera. And then I slapped a mask on and started sanding off the paint. Once smooth, I moved on to making it even more smooth by filling it in with wood filler. Since the caboose I used was pretty beat up, I needed to fill in a lot of the dents and imperfections it had on the edges and other areas. While it dried, two pieces of craft wood were cut to raise the height of the van.
After, they were all glued together and the gap in between was filled with even more wood filler, with the second pass applied to the roof. The results were incredibly pleasing, especially on the roof where the previous damage was a lot less noticeable. And I moved on to painting. A simple grey was mixed for it, and I planned for the van to have a black roof. I originally was going to paint the roof a lighter colour, but decided to have it black to differentiate from my other brake vans and to make any imperfections I missed less noticeable as a lighter color like white would create shadows. After some touch-ups, painting was complete and it was on to decals. When looking for reference material for this project, I ended up coming across this 20-ton brake van in the care of the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland. I really loved the unique styling of the van, and the two canopies or cabs in the front and back would make it a perfect base for my custom. The van had quite an interesting history too, as it was originally given to the Preservation Society in the 80s and was used for multiple years in regular train rides. But in 1996, after a deliberate fire was started in the Whitehead site, the van, among with multiple coaches, were severely damaged, making them unusable. But in 2006, several of the site's deteriorating rolling stock, which included this van, was planned to be restored by the Society's team of volunteers. In 2008, the job was done, and later in 2009, it won Best Wagon at the Heritage Railway Association's Carriage and Wagon Competition. Talk about a colorful career for this brake van. For my take on the van, I followed the original pretty closely, with the largest change being the GN on the side was converted to an SR for, you guessed it, Sodor, Sodor Railway. Railway. Really, really reliable, reliable and, and right, right on time. time. <laughs> While that was changed, I kept the van number and weight the same. The application process was fine as expected, but I didn't account for size of the canopy and ended up making it too large. So the access had to be painted black, which wasn't a huge deal. After some additional touch-ups with a paint pen were done, it was taken to be sealed with Krylon gloss. And we're done! But what about the name? So usually I wouldn't give a name to a one-off band, but upon reading the history of the basis on the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland's website, the team of people who restored the van lovingly gave him the name Ivan, so I decided to make him Ivan too. And now it's time for a reveal. Great job! As painful as it was to remove the bit off the top, and yes, it still annoys me, I'm super happy with the output. There's something super satisfying about having a little replica of a real brake van in this wooden scale. 
A special thanks goes again to the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland, whose article on Ivan was a huge inspiration for making this custom. I highly encourage checking out their page on Ivan and their website via the link below. So I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you've made it this far, please subscribe as it'll help me do more videos like this in future. And if you're feeling extra generous, visit my link tree where you'll find links to all my social media and my Ko-Fi where you can leave a donation and get a shout out in the next video. And with that, I've been Gio, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. I need the name! Give me the name!